Pretty official at this point. Oklahoma and Texas are saying bye-bye to the Big 12, and they are heading to the SEC. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests join us on the Goodyear Hotline. If you want to give us a call here, the phone number is 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. So, Jay, um, as I mentioned, uh, no more Texas and Oklahoma in the Big 12. It seems like it could be as early as next season that they're joining the SEC. But nonetheless, um, expansion is inevitable at this point um, in college athletics. But once we heard this news that – Oklahoma and Texas was leaving the Big 12. Well, really, their identity has been, I mean, forever. Like, this, that is the rivalry in the Big 12. And they are not going to renew their media rights. They are going to move on. Those are going to expire now in 2025. But it sounds like they could be on their way much sooner than that. Of course, that is not official yet. And they're going to go to the SEC. What does this mean for college football and for college sports in general and realignment? It means college football and the landscape – of college athletics as we knew it uh, are no longer. We will look back at this moment when Texas and Oklahoma notify the Big 12 that they were not going to renew those media rights that expire on 2025. When that happened, everything changed. Did it change today? Not necessarily. But in these, in these few weeks to come, these few months to come, these few years to come, you're going to see massive change because now – the clock is on. It's an arms race. The Big Ten is looking at, okay, how can we strengthen our conference, which is in a really good place. They're making money hand over fist with their network, uh, with the schools. Everybody's happy there. But with a move like this from the SEC garnering Texas and also Oklahoma, whatever it is, makes them look inside and say, is everything set in our home? How can we expand? An expansion is going to be a similar thought with the ACC and Commissioner Jim Phillips. And it goes back to Notre Dame. Can we get Notre Dame? The Pac-12 sitting there and saying, do we want to take some of these Big 12 teams? Who can we get? It's going to, at some point, Shay, end up with two, three, four mega conferences. How the dust settles with the teams that don't appear under those umbrellas, I don't quite know yet. But what we're going to see is this thing move towards mergers, potentially, of conferences. I know Jay Bill has floated something like that out with power conferences like the SEC and the ACC potentially having conversations. I don't know if that's to be true, but what I do know is thinking outside the box is going to become the norm. So as you knew the Pac-12, as you knew the Big Ten, as you knew the ACC before, and the landscape and the footprint and the teams involved, you're going to blink and they're going to be totally different. Schools that you never thought would be a part of this conference, mergers that you never thought would be possible – will become omnipresent. That's where this thing is headed. Okay, so I defer to you because you you wear the college football or the college athletic hat much more than I do, hosting over on ACC Network and obviously being a big part of that operation. You know these commissioners and these coaches better than I do, and so that's why I'm asking you these questions. First of all, um, when this conference realignment happens, you say it's going to change college athletics uh, forever. Well, this has already kind of happened. Like we saw – Big, it happened with the Big East. We saw when Rutgers and Maryland joined the Big Ten, when Nebraska left the Big 12, and just and they, I mean, their identity was in the Big 12 too, and they went to the Big Ten. We've seen conference realignment before. And so why is it now going to be the time when everything's getting shaken up and everything's changing? Because of the two charter schools for a Power Five conference have left that conference. The Big 12, as we used to know it, is vastly different when argue, Texas and Oklahoma leave. But wouldn't you argue Nebraska was one of the main stays, obviously, in the Big 12 when they left too? Or Rutgers and Maryland? I mean, Rutgers was a huge part of the Big East. Maryland was a huge part of the ACC. Maryland was a huge part, but you still had other pieces in the ACC. You still had North Carolina. You still had Duke. You still had Florida State. You still had Clemson in football. You still had Miami. You still had all these other pieces. Who do you have now in the Big 12? Who do you look to in the Big 12 and say, that's the team? Baylor? Oklahoma State, TCU, those aren't the brand Iowa names. Mm-hmm. You've seen the biggest schools, the chart, the, the most important pieces of the Big 12 move towards the SEC. And the biggest winner in this, let me be very clear, aside from the SEC, SEC and Greg Sankey, is Texas. Texas football, it's been a, a, a rotating chair of coaches there. They haven't really been relevant to the level they'd like since Mac Brown won that title in what was, I think, 2006 with Vince Young in that exciting game versus USC. This gives them relevance because they're in the home where football is absolutely king. You go in there, recruit. You say, we're going to be playing in these primetime games. We're a member of this conference. 
let's go get it. And you're going to see a rise in Texas. Oklahoma will continue generating the talent and performances they have uh, here in the CFP. They've been a mainstay. Uh, but that conference, all eyes right now on the SEC. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.